All right. So let's continue our discussion of the clocks and the standard normal distribution. Let me draw it again. Standard normal distribution. We're saying our clocks have a mean of zero seconds off and a standard deviation of one second. We're, we're, we're just claiming that is true about the clocks. If that's true, here's the shape. It's a standard normal distribution. Now, here's my question. What's the probability that I randomly pick one of the clocks off the assembly line? And let's write it this way. And the clock is, or I should say the movement, right? The clock movement. The clock is more than one and a half seconds slow. What's the probability that the clock is more than one and a half seconds slow? Well, remember, this is the fast side over here. This is the slow side over here. So if I'm talking about one and a half seconds, if here's negative one and here's negative two, then to be more than one and a half seconds slow really means right here at one and a half. So which clocks are we talking about? Well, we're talking about all the clocks down in this area, aren't we? These are all the clocks that are more than one and a half seconds slow. And if I were to randomly pick a clock off the assembly line, what's the probability I get one of those clocks that were really slow? Another way of stating this is, what percent of all my clocks are this slow? More than one and a half seconds slow. Okay, let's find it. Okay, remember this is x values. All right, first thing we need to do is convert my x value to a z-score. And we have studied z-scores earlier, so let's go over it again. To find a z-score for an x value, in general, we start with the x value, we subtract mu, the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. Well, for a standard normal distribution, mu is zero, so we're really not subtracting anything. And the standard deviation is one, so when we divide by one, again, we're not going to change it there either. So for the standard normal distribution, the z-score of an x-value is just whatever your x-value is. That's pretty easy. It's easy to change an x-value to a z-score because they're the same number for a standard normal distribution. So what I want to do, I want to change my, my boundary line here, my boundary line right here at negative one and a half. I want to change this to a z-score. So the z-score for negative one and a half is just negative one and a half. Okay, or negative 1.50. Remember, z-scores are always written with two decimal places. Now I want to show you why. I'm going to get out the z-score table, bring this up, bring it up, elevate it up here so we can see it. Here is the z-score table as it says at the heading, positive z-scores. And if we turn the page, we also have negative z-scores. This is table a-2. The purpose of this table, extremely important table, is to convert a z-score, a z-score that is a value of a boundary line, it converts the z-score value of the boundary line into the percent of area that's under the curve to the left of that line. Let me say that again. This table, this, this table right here, will take a given z-score value as a boundary line value, and this table then will tell you what percent of all the values are to the left of this boundary line. Not to the right, but always to the left. And that's good, because that's what I've got drawn in here. I want to know to the left. So specifically for this problem, we will use 
table A-2 to find out what percent of all clocks are slower than one and a half seconds. Because that's what this represents right here, this picture. And here's how we do it. You may not have ever seen a, a table set up quite like this. The way the table was set up is looking at the left-hand column, what this shows you is the z-score, but it only shows you the whole number part of the z-score along with the digit in the tenths place. But remember, we always calculate a z-score rounded to two decimal places. This column only shows you one decimal place. Well, the second decimal is across the top. That's what the columns are about. Okay, notice that the second digit goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, 6, 7, 8 to 9. These are the hundredths place of your z-score. So to find the z-score of what we had just asked for of negative 1.50, we're going to find the negative 1.5 over here on the left-hand side. Here's negative 1.5. And our hundredth place digit is a zero, so that's the very first column. So my number is just going to be 0 0.0668. 0.0668. So what that means is the probability that my z-score is less than negative 1.50 is equal to 0 0.0668. That's the probability that we randomly pick a clock and it's more than one and a half seconds slow. Another way of stating it is moving the decimal point two places, that's approximately 6.68%. We're saying approximately 6.68% of all clocks made in this factory will be more than one and a half seconds slow. All right. Let's do another example on the next video.